you ever been to a volcano? When it was erupting? You're now listening to Super Hooper. They're a bunch of guys who ain't never played the game. Super Hooper! Come, come, It's pretty. It's so pretty. We just won a fucking wall! That's what you said, man. I'm supposed to be a franchise player, and we're in here talking about... Super Hooper! Welcome to Super Hoopers, an inconsequential discussion of the week's NBA news. Follow us on Instagram at the Super Hoopers. Check us out, John. Ooh, yeah. social media. Yeah, I'm the host, Matt Hill. With me, as always, my brother, basketball, John Hill. Yeah, check us out. Get on the get on the Instagram. Our uh, our boy, Dave Futernick, little incel boy. Is, incel uh, boy. He's killing it. He's crushing it. Director of social mar- uh, media. Yeah, yeah director of social media. Yes. We only, but you know, that's that's how he comes on every other week. You know, maybe if he steps it up, we'll. we'll yeah, maybe if he on. was president of social yeah, media, then he could be on every week. Yeah, he's just the director. He's this week producer. we're talking a bunch of different topics. Early NBA news. We could talk a lot about Mark uh, Markel Fultz. Oh, what's going on there? The oh. Suns. We're having uh, our favorite uh, podcaster Joe Borelli on with us. He's going to be joining us on in the a Super Flight. Yeah, for the Super Flight. He super. stole our name. Yeah, exactly. He totally stole Super from us. We are the first thing to ever use Super, as, super a, as a prefix. Yep, no one's ever done it. Um, John, do you want to tell me about what the hell's going on with Markel Fultz oh before we God. start the number one pick? I what, know. Can you explain this to me? Because, like, as a non Sixers fan, like, not like nothing makes sense to me. No, no, because nothing makes sense. So he, so let me just tell you what I know. Okay, tell me what you know. He came into the season with a totally reworked, ugly, messed up shot that he's afraid to shoot. Um, he is overweight. No, just kidding. <laughs> he's a round face. He is a round face. Um, round face. He's he doesn't know how many teams are in the league. Mm, nope. No, nope, um, that's a, that's a hard one. No, but he's got this weird jump shot that he's afraid to use. There also may be a shoulder injury. The shoulder injury is real. Okay, he has a shoulder injury. The, the, yes, yes. It's unclear whether the shoulder injury was caused by the weird shooting motion or it's unclear which came first. Did he change his shooting motion to accommodate the shoulder or vice versa? Yes, yes. Okay, and then this week, Brian Colangelo came out, the GM of the Sixers came out and threw Markel Fultz under the bus. Uh, a little, yes. Said that I don't know what he said, but oh, but it came out. The agent came out and said he got a he got fluid drained, but then corrected himself and said no, he didn't get fluid drained. Uh, he got he a put, cortisone shot. So he put fluid in. So fluid went in. So, so a little, little, just a little mess up. Go yeah. ahead and call Woj and. Uh, yeah. So the, okay. So first of all, his agent is clearly a moron. Okay. Because absolute moron. Okay. Let me let me let let's just think. Uh, you're a sports agent. All right. Yep. You're a star NBA agent. Yep. You represent the number one pick. Yep. This is one of your best clients. All this, right. No, I, I I looked him up. No this other is clients. His own, he's got Zach Randolph on the last year of his deal. Okay. All right, and then great. he has a bunch of guys that aren't going to be in the league at right. the end of the year. So yeah. this He's is a surprise clients. prospect. Yes. But I, I would assume that you would know the difference between a cortisone shot and... I mean, you should be with this guy at all times. Absolutely. And you should know the difference. Second of all, the agent said that Markel Fultz literally can't raise his hands above uh, his head when there is video evidence of him doing this all the time. So the agent is so dumb that he doesn't know the difference between a cortisone shot and fluid draining and also doesn't know the definition of the word literally. Yep. <laughs> okay. So that's what I know. That's that's a lot of it. Okay. That, that is kind of what's out there in the public public world. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a couple of other things that are to me that are very interesting. Okay. And everyone, the problem is no one's actually like thinking it through. Yeah. So right? I don't understand. Wh- I I don't understand why Markel Fultz would change his jump shot. So the thing was, he was a good shooter. I mean, he wasn't a great shooter. He was a 65 percent free throw shooter um, in college. But so, no, so he was probably his his jump shot was great. His hezzy pull up Jimbo was great. His hezzy pull up Jimbo for all you real hoopers. So uh, he it, shot forty percent from three on a lot of volume. Okay, so why does he change it? Uh, why doesn't he know how many NBA teams there are? So he just goes rogue. He goes rogue. So so many things don't make sense. He goes rogue, changes shot, makes it worse. Maybe Absolutely he does it because of shoulder injury. Although it doesn't make sense because his shoulder looks fine for most of the summer. As, yeah. as you, John, found some Zapruder film. Yes, yes, yes. So this film, and I had the hat tip Spike Eskin because he posted it and called it the Zapruder film. But it is a video of Markel Fultz uh, at Cherry Hill High School giving some kind of demonstration to kids. And in it, 
right? Uh, because he, he has his he has his shirt off the whole time. The whole time. So I, looking, know, looking I don't good. know about his role model Uh-oh. abilities. Okay, so to back up a little on the timeline, right? He plays college. He's fine. He plays summer league. He's fine. Well, he didn't look that good, but all right. When I say fine, his jump shot looked like the okay, jump shot. Okay, right. It's the jump shot. It's yeah. fine. Then comes training camp and preseason, and that's when it looks bad, right? And that's around October, and that's when his shoulder starts ho- hurting. Right. So what happened in between that time? I don't know. Because you disappear. You know, players disappear yeah, from disappeared, summer league. He disappeared to the big Chick-fil-A in the sky. I yep. don't know. Where, where, where'd he go? So then Mark we Hall, found... Markel, wherefore art thou? We, so they found this, this clip, right? Uh-huh. Uh, of him at Cherry Hill High School giving a little demonstration. So this Markel is September. Spent the, fic, spent the off, off season at high schools. At a high school. Just hollering at the teenagers. Okay. Yep. All right. So this is September 16th when it was posted. So it probably happened a little before. Uh-huh. But Ooh. in this footage. Nice detective work there. In this footage, he has the busted jump shot. Right, uh-huh. because his new jump shot kind of starts by his shoulder, okay. and he does this. This is the earliest uh, scene. <laughs> this is the earliest, this is the earliest sighting of the busted jump shot yep. in the wild. Right. Not only that, but he is windmill dunking. Uh-huh. Right. You saw him dunk. Windmill dunk in the video. Right. Yep. He's look. He looks a hundred percent. He does a said. granny shot too. So maybe you know he did. But, but it's, it's a pre- backwards granny shot. It's a backwards granny shot from half court. He does yeah. it for the kids. But it is very, very clear that his shoulder is fine right so he also says uh my shoulder's fine everybody he says he announces that he actually announces gym. that i don't know it's kind of weird i don't it know was why kind he of said a weird that. thing yeah, to kind of say for the kids but, uh, uh but he announced no, it. i didn't so, say that all right yeah so then back to what you were saying earlier you know after his agent came out his trainer keith williams comes out uh-huh. and he's he uh crab uh, what's the word uh, Co- cooperates Co- cooperates cooperates that's a word i don't wow you're supposed to help me out. cooperates that's a word right cooperates is it no it's not cooperates well i mean I'll, maybe you don't pronounce it with such panache but uh <laughs> but it's cooperates our listeners are like how are these two fucking idiots don't know how to say <laughs> these, guys, these guys talk these on a guys podcast talk. <laughs> what you have a PhD. They listen to themselves <laughs> talk and say, we need to talk uh, and put it out publicly? Yeah, this is what we should be doing with our free time. Instead okay, of hanging out with your on? baby. John, okay, back so, to the, back so, to the thing. But then here's the thing. This guy, Keith Williams, uh-huh. his whole claim is, I'm his trainer. Right? He All goes right. on the radio, right. WIP, and, he's, and, he, and there's uh, Sam and Mick from USA Today mm-hmm. writes an article. He says, I'm his trainer. He has a beautiful jump shot. I would never touch it. Mm-hmm. It's his shoulder that got hurt. And then to relieve, you know, to compensate for the shoulder, that's why he switched his shot. Except I did a little Facebook uh, snooping. Oh, okay. I looked up Keith Williams, found out what he looked like. I'm sure there's no Keith Williams on Facebook. Keith Williams trainer. Oh, okay. All right. I find him, right? Because he lists that he trains uh, Boogie Cousins and Fultz. That's his Mm -hmm. claim to fame. And then I look in the video and I'm looking at all the other people on court. And I'm trying to see if I can find Keith Williams. Problem is, they all kind of... Sorry, guys. They all kind of look alike. And right. I couldn't tell. Oh, you're tell. looking in the video that we uh, saw with yes. the busted jump shot. Yeah. But then, I just read the description, and it says Keith Williams. Ooh, detective. <laughs> detective John kind of came so, through. Uh, so, going to Facebook doesn't matter. Oh, you saw what he looked like on Facebook. Yeah, but right, really... The, okay, but that the, didn't matter. You could have just cut that part I, of the I story out. I okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, but, but you just wanted to joke. talk about how you're on Facebook. You wanted to brag about your social media I went through this whole elaborate thing, thinking out your face find him and all this. But really, in the title, it's just a Keith Williams. You're basically Sarah Koenig from Syria. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, that proves that this guy's lying. Because the shot is broken... And his arm is healthy. And he's there. And he's there. And he's, he's there seeing, seeing the bad shot. Because here's the he's other He's touching th- the bad shot. Yes. Because here's... And he heard Markel tell all the kids, my shoulder <laughs> is <laughs> fine. And I got this busted shot. I got, yeah. I got this busted... <laughs> hey, guys. Check out this. Oh, wait. Right? So then, you know, here's the other thing, Keith Williams. You said in this article, you don't... I would never allow this to happen. You allow, you're his trainer. You allowed it to happen. Right. If his shoulder is hurt and he has to switch forms, here's what you do. You say, hey, man. Let's just rest the shoulder. Let's not try to revamp this jump shot. So then that's the Zabruder film. Colangelo said his things. Yes, I agree. He kind of threw He basically was like, no, the shoulder isn't really hurt. It should be fine. But John, the cortisone shot. And the cortisone shot. So his shoulder is hurt. Yes. I mean, here's the thing. It's hurt, Mm -hmm. right? It's without a doubt hurt. Everyone knows. Like he said it. The coaches said it. They didn't play him in the preseason. So your assertion assertion is that... Markel Fultz 
changed his jump shot for no reason. No, I think he was trying to tweak it. Uh huh. And he didn't know what he was doing because he's kind of a like I've been airhead. saying on kind this. Of an airhead. I've been saying on this pod he's immature. Mm-hmm. And then he's then maybe his shoulder did get hurt. Okay. And now he is stuck in this world of I'm in the middle of not of changing my shot. My shoulder hurts. I look horrible. It looks bad. He got the yips because now he's too scared to shoot. And if you watch him play, this is the thing where I knew it was mental, right? Because if your shoulder hurts and you have to change your shot, you still go through your routine, right? Not Markel Fultz. Mm -hmm. As soon as he gets to the line, that ball is up and out of his hands before the ref can even clear the lane. Oh, wow. And that is a sign that he is just trying to get this free throw shit over with. Right. That's a mental thing. Ooh, okay, so Ooh. your uh, first round pick has mental issues. A Met- lot and of mental issues. Every single other player drafted in the first round looks great. Okay, that's yeah, uh, well, that's not great. except Lonzo. Oh, well, let's get well. No. Enough two, of the, two for enough, eleven. Enough of the Lonzo. Oh, for five from three. Uh, he led the guys in plus minus. All right, they won did the game. That's the only stat that he did. He led the, he led the team in did plus minus know? for the Washington win. That's what we're talking about. We're recording this mm-hmm. Thursday night. October 26th. Right, Last night, call? the Lakers. Let's get Joe Borelli Let's on. get Joe Borelli, a Sixers fan. A Sixers fan. To see what he thinks what he about thinks. Let's get his take. Let's get his take. This is all gold. You just you missed out on all this gold? I wasn't recording. I don't. John just missed a bunch of gold, everyone. No, it was, it was three grown men who didn't know how to use Skype. No. For like I, 15 minutes. I explained to Joe that I'm going to grade him, okay? Okay. And I'm a so, very fair Hey, grader. welcome, Joe. Joe, what up? Hey. From the Super Flight. Yeah, we finally have you on Super Hoopers. Yeah. yeah. This is it. This I, is I great. Like, I like to... I like to consider myself a super hooper. Oh, thank Ooh. you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Honorable. Yeah, honorable. That's, um, yeah, you've had all so, the super hoopers on your show. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, th- I know. the three best episodes <laughs> of your show. Uh, <laughs> my episode number one. Fair. Yep. Uh, Dave's number two, and then John number three. Wow. I was the first. You guys kind of kind of copied the model that I right. the we, groundwork we, that we, I did. We I saw your down. pitfalls and uh, yeah. adjusted. I'm kind of more like the Bill Russell. Mm. And you're like the uh, DeAndre Jordan. Right. So way better than Bill Russell. Okay, mm, got it. No. <laughs> Good. And uh, more <laughs> handsome. Is he though? Uh, yes. Is yes. He though? Can we just, be, hot, can we just say that Dave Feudernix was the worst? <laughs> no. Can we just say that? <laughs> All right. Let's say it for now. All right. Dave Feudernix Joe, is you the You know worst. what's weird about Dave Feudernix is that I didn't realize he could talk that much because you guys always talk right over him. Wow. When he's on your show. That's, 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 that's very, what makes the episode just good. Grade that. Grade that. <laughs> Add right. marks. All right. Minus I'm, points. I'm, I'm, I'm minus points. Minus, minus 10 for you, Joe. <laughs> minus. Okay. Minus. Hezzy points. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Hezzy so, Jimbo's. So, Joe, as a Sixers <laughs> fan, okay. Yes. So, as a Sixers yeah. fan, you're not, you don't matter as much as I do because I'm a father. <laughs> so, as a father, I matter more oh, than you, oh, first of all. <laughs> so, what's your take on this fault situation? Like, what is, can oh. you, ex- what's, I mean, John, ex- John spent 10 minutes before uh, you came on explaining it to me. Um, <laughs> who's at fault? What's actually going on? Decipher it for us. All right. So, here's the thing. Um, they're handling this whole thing like shit. I blame Colangelo. Oh. I blame him for everything. Oh, everything. <laughs> I want Hinky back. <laughs> That's the end of the story. Oh, nice. Plus 200. Seriously, man. Okay, okay like, go ahead. The guy goes in. He, he like, why? what what purpose does it serve to throw your rookie first round pick, like first pick overall under the bus by saying like, you know, hey, man, I also had, oh, he, he goes and says that he injured his shoulder changing his shot. Like, it wasn't. It wasn't. He changed his shot because his shoulder was injured. Calandro was like, "No, no, no, no." He changed his shot. That's what screwed up his shoulder. Like, what? What, what, are, you, what are you trying to do? What is he? What purpose does that serve? Um, I don't know. I, I think this. It's it's a mess all the way around. So, what do you think? It, what do you think actually happened? What do you think's the real story, Joe? I think I think Markel Fultz is in his own head. Yeah. Honestly, I think that uh, I think he's got the yips. There it is. People keep saying he has there the you yips. Go. So, is his shoulder he actually hurt, or is he just? Got the yips. I mean, I think it's sore. I think I, I don't know. I'm not in his shoulder. I can't really tell you. But <laughs> we're not like besties or anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's Joe Borelli, not Joe Cortisone <laughs> shot. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, and the other weird thing is like Colangelo was like, listen, we don't tell you, you know, we don't tell you everything that happens to all our players. He's like, I just got a Cortisone shot in my knee. No. And I'm thinking, nobody gives a shit about your knee, dude. I know. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> nobody cares. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Yeah. Way to brag that you um, have health care, Brian. Yeah. Thanks. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> good good job. Good job. I don't yeah. know. What did you guys think about it? All right. Look, I, to me, we got a bunch of morons running around here. We got a bunch of people just, we got a bunch of nincompoops, okay? We mm-hmm. got Fultz. 
All right, first of all, I don't know what's going on with him. Oh, but my gosh. If he changed his shot without his shoulder hurting, like, I don't know what he's thinking. If he changed yeah. it because it, it hurt, why didn't you just go to a doctor and say, my shoulder hurts? Like, why didn't you just... So, I don't know what he's doing, but he's an idiot. His agent, we already covered this before he came on, sorry. His agent's an idiot because oh, okay. his agent doesn't know the difference between a cortisone shot and being drained. It doesn't know the definition of the word literally. Nope. Colangelo <laughs> is a moron as well. What is Colangelo doing? You're running a team. You have a first-round draft pick, first number one pick, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's messed up his shot. I, I, if he shows the day day one when he shows up to training camp with a messed up shot, pull him aside. Yo, what's going on? How what's going on with this shot? You, you look like shit. Yeah. We would have drafted you first if your shot would have looked like this. And, he, and he's like, my, hey, my shoulder's sore. Get the training staff on it. And what's the training staff to, doing? Like, there's so many levels of incompetence here. That oh my God! You don't even want, like. Do we have to talk about the Sixers training staff or the the the, the medical staff again? Uh, like this. But here's here's that, here's what's that's most on Brian, frustrating. Though, too. Go ahead. Here's what it's not though. This this medical team on this Sixers staff has been there for like the last twenty years. Yeah, it's the same guys, and they've handled like all the medical stuff so shadily and so shitty. They're clearly not doing a good job. Right, at least not doing a good job about being transparent. By the way, is why Brian Colangelo was brought in to begin with. They got rid of Hinky. Okay, hold because... on. I, I got to back up on this thing for a second. No, 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 no. Because this is yeah, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on. Just just to set the stage, uh, Joe. Just so you know, John Hill is Brian Colangelo's he knows. lover. He okay? knows. Oh, he knows. Okay, go ahead. And, and here's I'm the thing, and I hate defending this because, <laughs> look, when they said they were going to be more transparent, they lied to you. Of course they <laughs> lied to you. In what right. world is the PR firm or, you know, the team and the owner? Like, that's like being like, I don't know. This politician lied. Yes, of course. They all lied. There is no truthful team ever. I understand that, that everyone lies. I get that. But if that's the reason you brought somebody else in, why, I mean, and they're still going to keep lying. And like, and he's. He was supposed to be more transparent than Hinky. Everyone was mad that Hinky didn't didn't talk to the media, was terrible with agents, was not good with players, whatever. And so they bring in Colangelo, and the first thing he says is, I'm going to tell you everything that's going on, and I'm going to be transparent about, yeah, of course he lied to us. But, like, he's handling this so poorly. I mean, like, everything they do in that front office handled it so poorly. Like, right, obviously a part of this is on Mark Fultz. If he's injured and he's not telling anybody... You know, that's not cool. I get it. There's a lot of pressure on him as the number one overall pick. He wants to perform. He wants to be out there. He wants to, maybe there's like some certain bonuses or something that he wants to like something that he wants to reach. He wants to get all rookie team, right? Maybe maybe it's the good. girls He's, at Cherry Hill High School that he wants to impress. It could be Cherry that. Hill High School. There you go. Maybe something. he doesn't and know I, what his shoulder is. <laughs> he says he doesn't maybe, know. Yeah, maybe he was like, Hey guys, <laughs> my uh my elbow hurts. And they're like, Oh, well look at your elbow and then they're like, Wait a minute, that's that's not your elbow. He's like, Yeah, my arm elbow. <laughs> I mean he didn't no, know how many teams like were that, in the league, so so it's like look, that joke about the blonde that goes to the doctor and says she has a headache. And the doctor says, well, how do you know? And she's like, every time I touch my head, my finger hurts. <laughs> she's she broke her finger. <laughs> my, minus a couple points. Anyway, minus, 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 minus points. But, <laughs> blonde, blonde, blonde jokes in oh, 2017. Yeah. All right. All right, Joe. Um, I can't win. <laughs> no, my thing with Colangelo, you, John, you always say this. Oh, he lies. He lies. But most people lie with a purpose. They're lying for a reason. His lies mm -hmm. just seem to mess everything up. So it's like, I, I mean, yeah, he's lying, but he's he's not he's not he's not achieving his goals. All right, so let, right, I'm gonna he put always an end lies, to and then yeah, go he ahead. has to back up then too, and then admit the truth later anyway. Like, oh yeah, well, we just uh, we we didn't handle that correctly, right? It happens every time. Every time he comes every out, single time, and, lie, and every then... time people still get surprised. <laughs> what? Every, everyone's. I don't think it's a matter. of I don't know, it's not surprise. It's, it's outrage. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I don't think it's a surprise. I think we're just like, what the? Come on, like, man. Why are we stuck with this guy? Why are we stuck with this big collared John Hill lover? Uh, get yeah, him out of here. If anything, if anything needs a cortisone shot to help with the swelling, it's his collar. Ooh, so I'm telling you ooh, right. nice. Plus two. Nice. Plus two. <laughs> plus two. Add, add, put plus that two, down. Put that two. down. That was solid. Right, that was you. solid. That was only solid. two? I only get two for that? Wow. Yeah, it's, two, two, it's, two, it's a scale. Two, two to the eighth. Okay. Two, this no, is, right. uh, you got to keep up. Two to the eighth. There are levels to this. All right. Okay. Joe, so just, I'm going to give you the last word. So we have I, I get I told you Markel Fultz is an idiot. Uh, his agent is an idiot, and Brian Colangelo is an idiot. Who's the biggest idiot of the three? Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, I have to go with Colangelo. Mm, right, answer. right answer, right answer. Okay, plus three hundred. <laughs> Would you agree that 
them finally saying we're just going to sit them for three games is probably the best thing. Yeah, of course, but they should have done that like games ago. Like, yeah. why are you? I, I don't know. I, the second here's the thing, because the Sixers have such a history with injured first round yeah. picks. Yeah, <laughs> right. Sit him down. Like you, you, you sat Nerlens Noel for the entire year. You sat Ben Simmons for the entire year. You sat Joel Embiid for two years. Like just sit Markel Fultz down. Why all of a sudden now do you have a conscience and like, or not a conscience, but now all of a sudden you don't care about the the players. Uh, health like now you want to play him because yeah. why well yeah, yeah. My, my, i think they want to build up his value so they can trade him back to the celtics for the oh pick they gave us. Yeah. how dare you how dare you <laughs> yeah i'm taking points off of you oh <laughs> oh, oh counter counter points uh, uh, i actually think really i i think you were right i think you used the word you know when you use the word yips and i really yeah. think they thought that the best thing is just play through it and then maybe you'll just kind of get to the shot that you once had and I think he was probably more hurt than he let on. And he just mentally is just, he's just too young. It's too hard. Whoa. Well, it's ex- yeah. well, like, well, you, hold you, on. What are the yips? Can you explain what the yips are to me? Do you not know what the yips are? I don't think we have those it's, in Southern California. It's it's what I'm going to have after I have a couple more of these drinks. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no, Joe. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, Joe's going to start telling you know, us what he yips. really thinks. It's, have you ever seen Charles Barkley swing a golf uh, club? Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Say no yeah. more. <laughs> or it's like there's the, uh, you know, when you just, a golfer can't make a putt. You ever see right. Tin Cup? The mm-hmm. 90s? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Joe has. Did you ever see, uh, what's that movie where he couldn't turn left? Uh, the uh, Zoolander? Mo- Zoolander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a mental That's block, the, so he can't do the it. mental yep. block. There you go. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. So one from one dumpster fire to uh, the dumpster fire of Markel Fultz jump shot to the dumpster fire that is the Phoenix Suns. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so let me just uh, let me just recap for casual fans of the NBA. Um, there's this team in, in Phoenix that's uh, well, it's owned by it's owned by a cheapskate, a miser. Okay. Basically, Scrooge incarnate uh, owns the Sun, named yep. Robert Sarver. Robert He's Sarver. A, yeah, Robert Sarver. He's you know, he's a miser. Everyone hates him. And the GM, Ryan McDonough, is also seems to be uh, incompetent. Um, uh, they fired their coach after three games. They're, they're, I guess, their best player. Probably not their best player, but the Eric Bledsoe wants out. Eric Bledsoe tweeted, I don't want to be here. And then claimed so he was in a hair salon, <laughs> which is what a all-time great time legitimate, like, all-time best excuse ever. Yeah, just, just I just want to thank the NBA for giving yeah. us that. Yes. <laughs> but whenever uh, we're uh, in uh, trouble, I, I was at a hair salon. I'm not talking about the dumpster fire of a team I'm on. I'm talking about the hair salon I went yeah. to with my uh, yeah. with my lady. <laughs> you know, the first – did you hear this uh, – I hate to drop other people's pods on here, but um, did you hear the starters they were talking about? Like, what better excuses could you come up oh, with? Oh, that's – uh, you a, can always drop the starters, yeah. a.k.a. basketball oh, that's good. That was you, actually yeah, uh, yeah. that was actually a segment we were going to do, so good thing I didn't do that. If, they, if the starters yeah. did that. <laughs> that was a segment idea I had. The funniest thing, like I don't know why my head went here right away, but I was like, I would just say I was at the proctologist. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to be there. <laughs> hey guys, sorry. You're like, sorry. Yeah, that, that happens all the time when I'm at the proctologist. Hold on, I need a tweet yeah. about being at the proctologist. Yeah, I don't want to be <laughs> yeah. here. Don't want to be here. Yep. Um, Do not want to be here. No, so, like, I, I just want to, I just want to just uh, talk about how what how how they bungled the Eric Bledsoe situation. So, mm-hmm. Phoenix was awful last year. If you have a veteran on your team and you're awful and you know you're tanking and the veteran uh, is not mentoring anybody and uh, isn't contributing to winning, I mean, you're not trying to win, then trade him. Like all these teams, if you know you're going to be bad and you're trying to get a draft, just trade your veterans. Like, you know, the guy is not going to be part of whatever great team there is. They should have traded Bledsoe last year at the deadline. This summer, Bledsoe asks for a trade. Quietly, he goes to them, hey, trade me. And they say, nah, you know, we're going to need you. We're going to need to yeah. We're gonna need to have you sit out half the year again like we did last year so we can tank better. Just trade him then. And then finally he goes public and says, I don't want to be here. Um, and then they throw him under the bus and say, yeah, we're going to trade him. We're going to send him home, completely ruining his value. After it's already been tanked for six months. It's already lower than it would have been at the trade deadline. Like, yeah. it, it's... It, how hard is this? Like, how? I mean, how hard is it to be a GM? And how hard is it when when all this fiasco happens? Just say, just go to Eric. Eric, keep your head down. We'll trade you. We just need you to play a few get good games so we can pump up your value. How hard is that? Instead, he goes. The, the GM goes in front of the press and ruins the guy. Ruins the guy's agent, who you're going to have to work with in the future. It's like, man. All right. Anyway, sorry. What do you think, Joe? 
Uh, I think that you're exactly right. Okay. Yeah, thank I know. you. I think, thank you. I think 18 I, points. I hate. <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> good, good. I was sweating that one. No, I. <laughs> he, Eric Bloat, so I know they wanted to paint him as, as the bad guy in the, in the media right away, but like. He did everything right. He did everything that you would want your player to do. He handled it with professionalism. He didn't make a fuss. The only thing he did was when he finally had enough. Again, as you mentioned, last year they sat him down perfectly healthy. He was having a career year. He had his trade value at an all-time high. They could have got something for him. They could have done anything. But Ryan McDonough is a fucking moron. <laughs> can, I, can I say fucking? Yeah, yeah. Right, go ahead. You can, but you, all right, fuck. Uh, <laughs> just do it. Just do it. We're um, raw and uncut here at Super Boober. Yeah. Most, yeah. most controversial podcast. Yeah. I've heard that about you guys. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> good marketing. You can bleep, good marketing. You can bleep that out. Sorry, <laughs> I have a potty mouth. But yeah, he did everything that you would want a good player to do. A player on your team, somebody who's buying into the team, somebody who's not trying to cause uh, uh, locker Joe. room distraction or, or anything. Joe. And he, he, he bought in. He didn't say anything. He was he was the ultimate soldier. He sat when he was perfectly healthy, which, by the way, if I was him, I would be pissed. Can you imagine for a second? Imagine you're like first cello in an mm. orchestra. Okay. And Ooh. you're going and you're and you're playing Carnegie Hall. I don't know where this is. I love from, it. But anyway. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> do it. I'm doing it. And and you're about to go on and they say, yeah. hey, you know what? We we don't need you tonight. Can you just sit sit at, sit this one out? Oh. I would, I would, I would be furious. Oh, I would God. be furious. Yeah, more like um, no, no, ma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Put the points down. Put the points <laughs> yeah, down, Matt. Put, Put the points, points down. Some points. Joe, 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 counterpoint, though. Uh, yes. I don't want to say what my job is, but if I showed up at my job and they said, you know what? We don't need you today. I'd be like, okay. I'd be like, great. <laughs> great. I'm going to hit the great. yogurt yeah. land and I'm have going, myself a day. I'm going to Marley's Bar and Grill yep. in Scottsdale, uh, And I'm going to tell my wife Arizona. I'm working <laughs> so I don't have to go home and take care of the baby. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I actually, you know, I would have the opposite reaction. I would be like, oh, my God, they're going to fire me. I, I need to go to work. I, I so, better yeah. go to work. Yeah. 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 That's that. That's no, that, man, it's, that's that East Coast neuroticism. On the West Coast, we just chill. We just chill, man. Know, trying to, trying to get fired. to the West Coast. <laughs> yeah. So what is so what I you know just looking at the Suns I just wondering are they the most hopeless team in the league like what what teams would you like uh, because Joe as a Sixers fan you've been hopeless for many like, years what teams are more hopeless than the Suns <laughs> yeah you, right? are there any teams All more right. hopeless than the Suns Joe I mean I live in New York you're really gonna ask me this question <laughs> no, but the Knicks got Porzingis Porzingis oh, so, yeah they got Porzingis we got this and kid got Porzingis Frankie Nicotine yeah, yeah Frankie the Nicotine, other one huh? <laughs> by the way. I hate that nickname. Is that the worst freaking nickname? Oh, I love Bill it. Simmons What's wrong with Frankie Nicotine? Frankie Nicotine. It's just annoying. Like Frankie Nicotine. Oh, so dumb. It is pretty I bad. It. I'm sorry. Like, let's not it. encourage yeah. smoking to kids. Yeah, seriously. But then again, most New York New Yorkers are smoking by age four. It's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if that's true. We're all most people yeah. that are here are like uh, transplants. He's talking about the air trans- quality, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Oh, fair. You that's got, fair. The yeah. air quality sucks. Um, <laughs> no, I think uh, there's a correct answer. Joe is wearing Tim's right now in bed. <laughs> Joe, is that pizza wrap behind you? Oh, That's a pizza wrap behind you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I think I think the Pelicans are more hopeless. Like I think the Pelicans are more hopeless than uh, than the Suns, and I think Chicago's more hopeless. I think. Well, okay. So if we're talking about this immediate immediate point mm-hmm. in in right now, uh, no, the Suns are the worst. Yeah. The Suns are the worst because because the Pelicans have Boogie, they have AD, and they have Drew Holiday for now. Or, for now, they have Drew. Yeah. They have Drew Holiday's contract, and they have AD yeah, for now, and they have Boogie for now. But right, but they're not hopeless right now. And then who's the other team you said? The Bulls. The Bulls. Sorry, the Bulls are the Bulls are shite. I would rather yeah. be a fan Bulls of the Suns so because with, at least with the Suns, you got Devin Booker. Actually, you could root for Devin. Booker. You might be right. Yeah, Josh Jackson. Josh Jackson might be good. You can root for those guys. Dragon Bender. That, uh, I don't know. Maybe he's a thing, but his name's Dragon. So yeah, root for that. Just call him Dragon. It's better. Yeah. Uh, but as a you know, as a you, you're a fan of a hopeless team or a formerly hopeless team, the Sixers. <laughs> do you have any advice, Joe? Do you have any advice for our, our, our Suns here's, listeners out there? Here's my advice to all the hopeless fans out there of a, of a hopeless team: mm-hmm. get yourself a hobby. <laughs> I recommend a podcast. Yes, okay. yes, <laughs> it never smart. fails. I would like to say, look to all you Suns fans out there: you don't have to be a Suns fan. There's another rising team out west. Oh God, got a oh, lot of good, God. exciting rookies. Oh, and this team mm. I speak of, most of the fans are bandwagon fans. Yeah. So come on aboard. Come on. Become a Lakers fan. Just switch to the Lakers. All right. We'll take you in. All our fans are bandwagon fans. It's okay. Um, what, did, what? Let me ask you about that. What is that whole thing? Like, I, I know as a guy who's from the Philadelphia area, and John, you can back me up on yes. this one. 
Like, don't you get upset when people try and jump on the bandwagon for your team? Oh. Does it bother you at all? You know, it, it does if they weren't previous fans. I, I don't Isn't fault... Isn't that what a bandwagon fan means? No, no, no. I don't fault... <laughs> like, when the Sixers were really, really bad, I don't fault any previous Sixers fan that was like, I just can't deal with this. You know, right. like, I'm... Like, right now, I don't watch the Philadelphia Phillies because they're really bad, and I just don't have the time to keep up with, you know... I love them, and if they start showing improvements, yeah, I'll probably get back. I'll get excited again. If, yeah, if you're just, like, all of a sudden a Philly fan, you know, and you hated the Sixers or something like that, then, yeah, I'd be pretty pissed. I'd be like, you know. But then again, I don't even care. People do whatever they want. Yeah, I guess it's it's a – for me, I don't know. I think it's a East Coast thing where we, we claim our team so so hard, so personally. Yeah. Like, we really feel an attachment to them. And, like, anybody who's trying to trying to jump in with our team when you weren't here to begin with – it just feels like a no, no. That's true. If especially, you're not part of my tribe, exactly. Yeah. Especially if you yeah. were a hater during it. Like if you were yeah. the guy that yeah. was like, "Embiid sucks," the process is stupid, blah blah. Then now you can't They're, basically, basically, Bill Simmons. You can't be that guy. You know, yeah. you can't yeah. be like you guys are dumb and now be like, "Oh my god, this team's great." I told you, like that is r- wrong. From my perspective, if someone's happy following a team, I, you know, I don't, I don't mind other people's happiness. Don't count another man's money. Yeah, but that's know? a man who needs that. <laughs> he has to put up that like There's because a, you're protecting Joe, there, there yourself. May be, uh, there may be uh, audio tapes of me denouncing my Laker fandom and declaring myself a Warriors fan. Yeah, so I need, I need. Yeah, to have he needs this, it now uh, that he's back. Yeah, yeah, he's got, got a, a back. Wow. a little NBA Ronin boy. I have some more hey. advice. I have some more advice for Suns fans. Uh Oh, my advice. This number sounds two, like a bit that's uh, coming up. Become a billionaire. Uh, oh, just take some time. Become a billionaire. Buy the team. How hard can it be? Not uh, that hard. Oh, buy the team. I love it. Okay, if you can't, if you can't become a billionaire, find the local billionaire that could buy the team. Oh, find out what he's into. Oh, so so say he's into the ladies, right? Ooh, get some escorts. Buy some escorts. Oh. Then you tell the escorts. Pretend like basketball is really cool because rich people, the rich people aren't cool. They just like to hang out with cool people. So you send mm-hmm. the girls over to him, and they're like, oh, we love basketball. Basketball is the new thing. Oh, the Phoenix Suns. And he's like, oh, I could buy the Phoenix Suns to impress you. There you go. Now you got a new owner who's presumably – any owner is better than Robert Sarver. That's what you okay. need to do. You need to get All rid right. of him. Uh, okay. My last piece so of advice for so you're you're saying, yeah. So you're saying as a 42-year-old man, I could, I could hang out with some really wealthy dude and convince him to buy an a NBA team to, to prove that he's cool. Joe, if you were cool. If you are cool, I don't know if you're cool. I don't know. I have no information. I assume you're an artist in New York. Maybe you're cool. If the rich dude thought cool. you were cool, you could hang out with him. He'd be like, "Yo, basketball, basketball's what's hip, dog." I don't know how cool yeah. people talk. I'm not cool, but no. maybe that's what they talk. maybe that's how they talk. Yo, you know what's happening in the streets, rich dude? It's basketball. Anyways, uh, last yeah, time. yeah, got see? it. Let's just do that. Do that. <laughs> Listeners can't see how I move my head. You gotta move your head. It's all cool. It's people all cool people the move their heads from <laughs> side to side a lot. Oh right? my god, you look oh. like Quagmire. Oh. Oh. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna buy this. That's my new I'm gonna character. hire this escort to uh, have sex with these billionaires. <laughs> but then I'm gonna have the escort whisper. By the suns, and then <laughs> right, uh, right as he climaxes, yeah, and yeah, yeah. then uh, then Robert Sarver won't be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's a do. great this solution, is, creep boy. This, this like, whole hey. thing got really, this whole thing got really creepy. Uh, really got fast. really fast. Oh, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the Super Hoopers show. I know. Welcome <laughs> to the Super Hoopers. Was it creepy? Until you said it was creepy. Negative hundred points. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. All right, I have another question. It's an actual basketball question. So we'll just mm-hmm. go through it real fast. Uh, which of these early surprise teams are for real? Okay, so I'm going to tell you the team. You tell me if they're for real or not. Uh, the Orlando Magic. No. Oh, wrong. They're for real. Okay. Mm. That was the wrong <laughs> not, answer. Sorry. Not real. No, they're for real. Dude, they got Aaron Gordon, man. He's good. They got yeah. Frank the Vogel. They're yeah. coming up, man. Remember, one of these, remember when he was bad last year? One of these. Look, it took, it took a year, year to jump. And the year before that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, okay, next team. Them or when the, their point, point differential's horrible? They're, no, the Orlando Magic's money, man. One mm-hmm. of these crappy East teams is going to make the playoffs. You'll okay. see. Right. Speaking of crappy East teams, the New, uh, no, the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> <laughs> the Brooklyn Nets, <laughs> formerly the New Jersey Swamp Dragons. The Brooklyn Nets, uh. I think they're 3-1. and one, or the, they're, they're, They just beat the Cavs. They're 3-2, yeah. maybe. Uh, the, uh, just, the Brooklyn Nets. Before are, I answer the, go ahead. Before I answer this question, wrap your mind around this. The Brooklyn Nets actually have a better record than the Sixers right now. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so why are they for real? And they beat the Cavs. Are they for real? Uh, no. Okay, no, that's, they're not for real. That's, no. But they're going to have a nice start to the season. That's the right answer. That's the very, right answer. Okay, you're, you're one for two. Okay, next one. Right. The Clippers. Are the Clippers for real, Joe? 
Yeah, I'm. Uh, man, this is a hard one. I'll I'll go with yes. I think the Clippers are for real. Oh, you got it right. You got it right. Correct yeah, As long as they, as long as they still they stay healthy. As long as they stay healthy. Yeah. yeah like Milos Teodosic is how, already out. Yeah. Right? Well, with, I I told you he was going to be out. Yeah. You old Europeans never play well. Right. That's true. Well, happen. but they they got enough. For, they got Pat they're Beverly. Great, you know, they're they, great for you. But he's a rookie. He is a rookie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he just has the yips. Maybe he changed yeah, the he shot the between <laughs> summer league and preseason. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on, Teodosic knows what's up. Hey, but how fun is Blake? Of course, Blake's the Blake, best. Blake's crushing it. That 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 uh, shirts and blouses meme uh, from the dunk the other night. That was the best thing I've seen you know, on Twitter all year. Blake looks like when your boy who's been dating this horrible, horrible girl that just nags and nags and yells at him. Like he's free again, right? Like he seems like he's mm. like Chris Paul is gone. He seems like he's free, having fun, dunking on Gobert, hanging on the rim. Like it's good. It's good to have him back. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I dig it. I like it. I think the Clippers are for real. As a not cool person, I've never known anybody to date anybody else. So <laughs> all my friends are <laughs> incels. All my friends are incels. So I can't <laughs> uh, identify with that scenario. Uh, next up, Memphis. Is Memphis for real? Me- Memphis is for real. And I don't know why I doubted that they would be good. Nope, they're, they're not for real, Joe. Sorry, you're, that's wrong. That's the wrong oh. answer. That's the wrong oh. answer. I'm, I'm doing terrible. They're going to get injured. They're going to get injured. Come on. They always get injured. I mean, there are, aren't they already injured? Yeah, actually, they're for real. And Coach Fizdog, the Fizdale, he's Fizz dope. Dog. Marcus Saul's great. Yeah, Mike Conley. Every year I crap on them, and every year they're good. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And Rio is actually playing, and he's playing well. Yeah, yeah. Mario Chalmers, Chalmers, Rio, Rio. Yeah. Sorry. And then uh, Rio, Rio. That's my son's. And then Fizdale, movie, by Fizdale's the way. Okay, wife. Never mind. Still, Fizdale's keep, wife is for real. Mm, that for is for real. real. <laughs> Parts of her are not for real. Parts but, of her might not be for real. But huh? the whole but, package. For real. For real. <laughs> she is real. It bounces out. All yep. right. Last thing. Last yes. thing before we get to get at me, dog. Joe, you're an artist. Right? I claim to be one sometimes. Uh, what are the top three logos in the NBA? All right. Do you really want me to? You want the real breakdown? Want the no, breakdown. no, no, no. I know. I know what the top three are. I'm just seeing if you know as an artist. <laughs> this is a clip. I'm just, oh, seeing, right. you, yeah. just seeing if you can get it right. So, so you're going to tell me it's the Lakers, the Lakers, then the no, Lakers. The Lakers right? logo is kind of crappy. Okay. The Lakers logo sucks. Yeah, yeah it's pretty it was, lame. It was, it was pretty lame. one of those things that was designed in the 50s, and they just kind of stuck with it, which Be, tradition I before understand. Before I give you the before I give you the top best ones, the top mm-hmm. three best ones, can I give you the worst? Yes. Oh, we all know what the worst is. We all know what the worst is. Better. Go ahead. You're gonna you're you're gonna say OKC, right? Yeah, the OKC one is awful. What's worse than the OKC? It's awful. Look, are you? Are, can you look at a logo right now? Yeah, sure. Look, sure. look at the Rockets logo. Oh, I've, just I know the, I know the Rockets one. Yeah, yeah. Why in God's name would you use such a phallic logo? <laughs> like it looks like a penis putting on a condom. Am I wrong? Oh, that oh. one. I see the one you're talking about. I was thinking of just the one where it's just the. the yeah, you're right. Ooh, we wait this one. Yeah, yeah that one. Yeah. No, he's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. L- listeners, by the look way, up, either, either hoop- look up the Houston Rockets logo or look up a penis putting on a condom. Either one of those will bring up the Houston Rockets <laughs> logo. <laughs> same thing. Yeah, same, same thing. thing. Yeah. By the way, if that's a hoop, why is the thing going through like yeah. upwards? It's your ball supposed to be going down anyway. All right. So the best logo. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I just, go ahead. I just wanted to point that go out. Go ahead. Top three. Um, top three. I'm going to have to go with, uh, let's see, the Warriors. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's number two. But okay. Yeah. That's we'll, we'll count it. It's in the top three. Do you want me to give you the reason? Uh, it's go beautiful, on. but okay, go ahead. Well, it's just very dynamic. It's it's a it's a really nicely compositioned like it's it, if you look at the bridge the way it enters the mm. image and comes down through the arc and you can see uh, never mind it's very it's a nice composition. It it's is a very nice it's, logo. It's strong, yeah. very strong. It's pretty strong. Uh, I actually have to go with Milwaukee. Mm. Ooh, mm. that is on know, the list. Possessed that, deer head. How could you not like that? And it's got the little basketball inside the like the thirty point antler. It's buck, like beautiful. <laughs> you know what though? I will say it's it's getting a little aggressive. It's getting a uh, little kind of weirdly. I don't know. There's some kind of like alt right vibes to it. So okay, this, it, it, there's right. there's a that, little like J- John, you're either with us or you're against John, us kind of vibe to hmm. it. Let me give you some backstory. We have a fan of the podcast who's a Milwaukee's Bucks fan who's declared war on John. Yes. Because John said Giannis <laughs> was uh, overrated. So uh, John's just doubling down. That's what's happening Yeah, here. look at that. Uh, You're going to tell me. It's a beautiful logo. It's which, which side of World War II did it's that nice. guy fight on? Well, that's true. It is a little which, fascist. It's a fascist now symbol. It, now that I look at it, imagine it on an SS soldier's yeah. arm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a little. All right. Look at this. And here's like, here's us. Here's the three of us. Yeah. Now there's yeah. one called the Wisconsin Herd we're looking at. Oh. Ooh. 
So yeah, yeah. Oh uh, listeners, just, to, go- just yeah. listeners, Google fascist deer. Fascist and, deer. Uh, the Bucks <laughs> will show Bucks up. Logo will come yeah. up. But shout out to I Justin did. Johnson. Shout for, out to uh, Justin Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I Frank did not Madden. see that coming. Yeah, um, scary. All right, last one. So we all have right. the. We, you're, you're two for two. These two are all two. my. Li- these are both on my list. Really? Yeah, yeah. So this last one is not going to be on your your list Ooh. at all. I just like this last one because I think it's really clever and it's very subtle, and you don't almost you almost don't even notice that it it is what it is until you take a double look. But a double look is that a thing? Mm-hmm. No, it is. Yeah. <laughs> take Washington. a second look, but it's East Ooh. Coast. A second look. Yeah, but a double look. Yeah, yeah double Washington look works. That's think, better. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a thousand points for that, Joe. Thank you, thank Washington. you. Washington. Right. Am, okay. am I back in black? Wait, what'd you say? Um, wait, wait, would you say the logo yet? Yeah, yeah Washington. I said Washington. Oh, I didn't hear you. Okay. Oh. No, the Washington logo is great. It's fantastic. Which one are you talking about? Are you talking about the hand one, the DC one? Or no, the, I'm uh, talking about the the ball with the monument in it. Uh, and the star. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice I never yeah. even noticed it was the monument. See, Ooh. see what I'm saying? Wow, that exactly. is strong, Joe. We right? got a real Mark right? L. Fultz wow. over here. Didn't even notice the <laughs> monument. Jeez. <laughs> Although that also kind of looks like a penis, but I'm just saying mm-hmm. it might just be me. Mm-hmm. I think I think you just have penis on the brain, Joe. No, no, wow. it does. It does. It does. I wrote actually. Penises are let hilarious. Me just, let me I'm just, just name drop. Uh oh. Right. Okay. In 2005. Uh-oh. Okay. Before Obama was even running for president, me and famous actor Randall Park oh, wrote gosh. a comedy sketch imagining a world where Barack Obama was president, and he erected the monument, the Obama monument, and it was a black Washington monument that was seven <laughs> times the size of the Washington monument. <laughs> 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 Did I say that's fucked up without yeah. offending you? No, that's great. <laughs> hey, it was 2005. 2005, 2005 you could get away with that. You could do that. Things, things are, are totally different. different. Yeah, totally yeah, different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's actually pretty brilliant. Wow. Good job. Great okay. sketch. Great, Great sketch. sketch. Just, just okay. Me, me, and me, and Randall, me and Randall spoke it into existence, and then Brock became president. <laughs> yeah. 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 Those yeah. were the best eight years of the country's life. Yeah. Before yes. the republic fell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh. Thanks for playing, Joe. Uh, um, most you've, done, you've done quite well. I have you at uh, 12,000 points. For Ooh, all this. So, that's not <laughs> bad. You. I don't think what, your math what, works quite right, but thank you. Yeah, but what's that per 36? That's that per 36. Uh, this is not advanced yet. This is an eye test. Joe has You eye test the, I, I, I tested <laughs> the numbers. You I, 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 I tested the addition, okay? Oh, my you just, God. I kind of test. You just eye tested the shit out of me. Yeah, that was great. All right, Joe. Do you want to... Do you want to relax for a second, or do you want to just go into Get At Me Dog? Did you do Get At Me Dog? I I attempted Get At Me Dog. Let's, Let's do it. What's your Let's time like? Let's just do it. Uh, All right. Get At Me Dog is a game we play. Get At Me Dog is a game we play where we tweet at NBA players, and we score points if they respond. Yes. This week, our subject was one Tobias Harris of the Detroit Pistons. Right. Detroit. Yep. I saw on his Twitter that he was always um, you know, propping up his little brother. And his little brother's in the D-League. So I tweeted at Tobias. I said, G-League heads know that at Tyler Harris, set to take over the NBA, just like his bro Tobias Harris did. Hashtag real hoopers know. Hashtag Harris bros can cook. Hashtag buckets. Wow. Strong. Joe, do you want to go next? Yeah, Joe, why don't you go? No, I want to go last. Mine's terrible. I don't know how to play this game. You have to go next. You (laughs) You got to go next. That's how it works. I always go last. I always headline. I know, I know he's like uh, playing well this season. So I was just like at Tobias, uh, at Tobias 31. Better watch how well you play out there. You might end up in an all star game. Hashtag Detroit basketball. Ooh, mm. solid. Go with the compliment. I like that. Very good. I like that. Yeah. Very good. I was uh, kind of dialed this one in. I saw him tweet, uh, posted an Instagram photo of him with some headphones. So I said, What headphones are you wearing in that photo? Those are dope. I want a pair. Hashtag blessed. All right. So, Joe, right. did you get a response? What do you think? I don't know. Did you? I don't know. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not get a response. <laughs> John, did you get a response? Uh, those are Bose Quiet Comfort 35. I got a response. <laughs> get at me, dog, in the get house. Get at me, dog. Put them points on the board. Points on the board, Lash City. Yeah. Thank you, Tobias Harris. What a, what just helping me out. Yeah. I was hoping he was like sponsored, so he had to do it. And right. it, it looks like it paid off. And he looks like he did. And he did. Uh, and then did you respond to that? I did. What I just that? said, thanks. If I tell them I know you, do I get a discount? Laughing, crying face, three of them. 
And that was the end of it. Beautiful. beautiful. Matt, did you get a response? Uh, I got a like. You got a I like. I got a like ah, from, from to- Tobias Harris. Ooh. So, from the real the Tobias board. or like his brother? Like, we'll no, no, no. I'm from a, the real I'm Tobias. A I'm a from check. the real Harris brother. Okay? I got a check. You, could, I got you a can, check. you know, you can effort it and check. Let me see. I'm going to check. I'm going to check. Yes. Ah, so, that's true. Uh, it happened. Sorry, it happened. Joe. Looks like your big loser. Uh, on this yeah. one. Mm, mm, I better. think I think that started when I called into the show. <laughs> no, 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 no. Perish the thought. Snap. Perish the thought. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's definitely coming back. Um, <laughs> Joe, you might replace Dave. Yeah. There's how's, no replacing Dave. How's how's your social media skills, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Did you not hear the tweet I just tweeted? <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. That's, never mind. Never mind. All right. All right. Dave, it's all good. You're, Dave, you're rehired. All right, I got, we got, I got some headlines. Oh, uh, you got headlines. I got some headlines. Oh. Uh, these are, uh, Joe, if you're not familiar, uh, we just, I just read headlines from the newspapers. Okay. Uh, these Eric, are actual things happening in the league. Yeah, these yeah, were yeah. just reading the news, guys. Yeah, Folks just, were uh, just reading the news. Just a headline. Uh, Eric Bledsoe tweeted, I don't want to be here, and claimed it was in reference to being at a hair salon in Phoenix. Oh, sorry. It was claimed to being at a hair salon, not the Phoenix Suns. At first, the Suns didn't believe him until he clarified... I was at a hair salon run by Jeremy Lin. Headlines. <laughs> Ooh. Jeremy Lin uh, doesn't have good oh, hair. No, uh, a little soon. A little okay. soon. Uh, not on the court anymore, David Matt. Stern mm-hmm, mm-hmm. wants marijuana off the banned substance list. I heard that. I saw oh, that. Oh, shit. We weren't supposed to smoke weed, said 80% of the league. Headlines. <laughs> Brian Colangelo defended the Sixers saying that he himself uh, got his knee drained and he didn't report it. And that's why he walks funny. He went on, I repeat, the reason I was walking funny was because I had my knee drained, not that my lover John Hill was in town. Headlines. So you're supposed to say, head, supposed to say headlines, I'm even sad. though you heard yeah, it before. Yeah. All right. Okay, headlines. <laughs> All right. headlines. Last headlines. one, last one. Am headlines. I supposed to say headlines too? Should I say headlines? Do you, do you have headlines? You can, you can say no, headlines. You can say headlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just say it. Just say it. Because <laughs> these just, are actual headlines. Oh, this right, last rough week for headlines, okay. though. What? <laughs> I'm just saying the news what? The news is usually, like, kind of funny. This it's, week, it's, it's a slow news week. It's a slow news week. It's a slow news week. Speaking of slow news week, this last one's bad. Snoop Dogg had this to say about Lonzo Ball. His daddy put him in the lion's den with pork chop drawers on. Proving his business acumen, LeVar Ball immediately released Big Baller brand pork chop drawers. No, headlines. headlines. A, I didn't ooh. understand any of that. I, <laughs> what do you mean? You didn't I, understand that? <laughs> oh, that was rough. That was rough. You didn't see the quote? Uh, Snoop Dogg said his no. daddy put him no. in the lion's den no, with we pork saw chop it. drawers we on? You didn't understand? Just, no, I didn't actually. <laughs> I did not see that. Yeah, Sorry. that's what Snoop Dogg said. He really yeah. said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesus. Yes. Ooh, rough. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes, sometimes the AP wire is really busy. You know, we're mm-hmm. not. Maybe we didn't pay for the premium subscription this week. They kind of just gave <laughs> us the like leftover headlines from like. Maybe they were translated from another language. All right, is All that, right John. Is that, John, right. last week you did the hackest <laughs> bit ever. Your freaking top ten things more broke than Gordon great. Hayward. That was it was great. like hack and offensive. Okay, that was great. John I got hopped a great in the time machine, right. went to eight, 1982. For a top 10 list last oh, week and he's gosh. talking about my headlines <laughs> uh shout outs and beefs shout outs and beefs. Uh, can i beef with those headlines <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. Nice. all right joe and i are about to <clears throat> separate from this pod and form our own pod called the super super hoopers or something like that i don't know <laughs> the super flighters super super, super, super flighters <laughs> uh, uh shout outs and beefs so this is the time of the pod where we just relax shout out beef whatever you want to beef with um you know just lean back relax whatever you gotta you know whatever you gotta get off your chest i'm gonna shout out uh deontay murray or dejounte murray i don't know how to say his name uh spurs uh spurs second year player i don't know if you, i don't know if you saw this but he waved pop off pop like tried to like he was uh dejounte was like calming i think lamarcus aldridge down and uh, Pop tried to get in there, and, and freaking Murray, the second-year player, waves Pop up. He's like, I got this. I got this, Pop. Get out of here. So shout-out to him. Also found out that his nickname is Mustard, which I think is a great nickname. That is a great nickname. Mm-hmm. Why do you think he was called Mustard? Because of his first name, Dejante. <clears throat> that sounds like Dijon. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, headlines. Yeah, headlines. Oh, that would have been, been a good headlines. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's not a headline. Yeah. 
It would have been better. It would have been <laughs> better. It probably would have fit. It would have been probably your top one this week, to be honest. We're just yeah, keeping it. Brian Colangelo one's good. That was people yeah. are gonna like that Brian oh, Colangelo okay. one. What do you right, think right. about it? I don't know if you got it, but I implied that you and Brian Colangelo had intimate relations, Sean. I don't know. If, I don't yeah. know if you understood. Yeah, we heard. Uh, it was subtle. It was subtle. subtle. Okay. I, I got to <laughs> picked up on it. I am going to. Uh, I'm gonna shout out LeBron James. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you saw this quote from LeBron. This was his quote. Ever since I was a kid, I learned every position on the floor. For some odd reason, I could learn every position on the floor all at one time. Point guard, shooting guard, uh, s- small, small forward, forward, power, power forward. forward. <laughs> <laughs> you know, other positions. There. Yeah, wow. <laughs> you sh- oh, you know what? Maybe this uh, super flighter podcast might work. <laughs> I think I might. that might be the sign. Maybe it's time. And, that- uh, <laughs> anyways, what are you, uh, Mark L. Fultz? <laughs> <laughs> just had a brain lapse in terms of what the other positions. I usually. All right, look. All right. As as, you as know, someone who's deep into the place, I usually call it one, two, three, and four. That's what I, that's how I refer to the positions. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah, by on. the way, here's how to sound smart on an NBA podcast. Okay, here's, what here's, here's what you do. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. Yeah, here's what you do. Oh, uh, I, I, you know, I think he's at the wrong position. They, they have a slaughter in at the four. Uh, he should move to three. Uh, you know, given the strengths of his game, maybe he can even guard up twos. But uh, uh, I think his uh, natural position is, is play, yeah. playing the four Just, and uh, uses his speed and athleticism to uh, play the four. And then, uh, in today's NBA, he's today's definitely NBA, uh, stretch five. Uh, he's he's six foot two, but he should he should be a five. Yeah, the uh, that's that's how you sound smart. Just that's say they smart. should p- play a different number. Okay, just, that's that's all I that's all I know from smart NBA podcasts. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Don't don't <laughs> take into job. account what the player wants to do, right? Or what the player has done his whole career. Right. Just uh, just tell them he should just do it. Just say numbers. Just uh, he should play the five. Say numbers. Um, no, no. I, look, I'm shouting out LeBron because I love the way he says this. He's he's basically saying I'm. He says, oh, for some reason, I'm a genius. Uh, for some reason. Uh, I could just do all this stuff, and I think I'm going to start using that in my own life. Yeah. When I was a kid, I made up a unicorn without ever having seen a unicorn. <laughs> no, I'm not, no. <laughs> uh, I'm a, when I teach my students, when I teach my students, I'm like, solve the problem. I'm like, oh, for some reason, I just know how to do this problem. I, I'm sorry. You can't do it. Uh, just, you know, for whatever reason, I, I, I can do it. I, I mean, I guess it. I'm smart, and you're not, so... Uh, I don't know if I told you this, guys, but I actually use 11% of my brain. Whoa. <laughs> so. For some reason, I use everyone else uses 10, but for some reason, I use 11. I don't know. I guess. For some reason. Because I'm just gifted. Uh, uh, I got to shout out uh, Kyrie Irving. Oh. Oh. For uh, thinking that the floor they're playing on <laughs> <laughs> was the original floor. I saw this. I saw this. But Wait, what, it was, so they, what was his quote? So, the, so, the, so, so let's just give the background for people who don't know. The Milwaukee Bucks like repainted their floor to like a retro look from the 70s, okay? And Kyrie Irving thought it was the actual 70s floor. So he says, uh, he says, I have his quote here. I'm all about safety, so we'll see it is, how it is on my knees. See how it is on everyone's bodies. I know this is a pretty older co- court, and it looks like it's pretty fresh painted as well. I'm just going to do my assessment and go from there. And then they were like, um, uh, it's a new court, Kyrie. And Kyrie's like, nope. <laughs> It took me three steps to realize this is not the same NBA court I'm used to playing on, okay? And if we all know, Kyrie's feet know everything, okay? Kyrie's feet know yes. the world is flat. He know- Yeah, he's Don't watched. question those feet. Yep. They're, those feet are smarter than most people's brains, okay? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, shout out to Kyrie just keeping it, just, just making me feel slightly better about Markel Fultz. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kyrie. No, but like Kyrie's like actually he's like smart but not really smart. It's like but you he's, know, he's he's not like I, an airhead like Markel. Yeah, well I, Kyrie's like first year of college smart. Right. Like you're just, <laughs> exactly. You're, you're, first one year of Duke. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Half it's like, semester, one semester of Duke yeah. smart. It's yep. like smokes yeah. weed once and goes to a diner with a philosophy student smart. That's like that's yeah, like exactly. it's like the t- type of conversations I had like on the roof. After I don't want to say I smoke weed, but you know, if I did, I don't want to be on tape saying that. But if uh, I did, yeah, yeah, that's the type of conversations Wait. I would have had. Okay? Yeah, you're actually using tape to record this. That's weird. <laughs> no, whatever, whatever. That's because Matt got high before. Yeah. Inside, turn on the tape deck. <laughs> Jesus. All um, right, Joe, you got any shout outs and beefs? I want to shout out uh, Joel Embiid's hair. Thank you for getting rid of the cornrows. Ooh, cornrows, no good. I don't like. You got to add to the height as the as you know. That's that's extra rim protection. Is uh, <laughs> yeah. Anything else? That's Anything it. else, Joe? 
No, I think that's it. I think it's. It. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna do a little shout out. Oh. I'm gonna shout. Ugh. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. A little uh, shout out. Happy birthday to our boy uh, Alex Kavutsky. Uh, I went to I went to see him last night. Uh, also, shout out to uh, Ariel Gardner of Alex and Ariel, and you know they got a couple new films out. Be, and you know it's been fun. Ariel's a Lakers fan, a real Lakers fan. Been a Lakers fan his whole life. Uh, I also got to see a lot of the a lot of my old friends last night. And I stayed out past my bedtime. And uh, felt like total shit all day at work. Yeah, like, I, I mean, li- <laughs> I literally just felt so bad. That was last night. I, I, I mean, not to brag, I was invited to that party, but I, I you know, I have a kid, so I couldn't go. And it was on the Is other side. Is that bragging? Town. Well, uh, okay, whatever. The reverse <laughs> of bragging. Uh, talking about a horrible. Uh, once again, preaching not having preaching birth control to everyone out there. <laughs> 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 but I also stayed up way past my bedtime watching that Lakers overtime win, so uh, just as thrilling. Yeah, that's that's why my fiance didn't go to the game or uh, go to the party. She was like, "Ah, watch the, the Lakers, Lakers are on. Do I have to go?" And I was like, "No, no." Yeah, uh, trust I'll, me, I'll, I'll stay out. Yeah, I'd rather watch the Lakers than Alex Kavutsky. All right, let Ooh. me tell you that one. Ooh. He doesn't listen to this. He no, he doesn't. But Ariel, will tell him. I actually, I actually had the exact opposite reaction watching the Sixers game. As soon as they lost, I went to bed. You just so. went to bed? <laughs> oh, like, my God. This is sad. <laughs> oh, I was hyped. I was hyped. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, by the way, let me let me, let me me clarify, too, the reason I don't like Joel's hair as in, in cornrows. I'm not, like, anti-cornrows. Mm, I just problematic. Think so Joel, it, was very problem, it, was, it was very problematic. problematic. Very I didn't problem. want to call sorry, it out, sorry. but it was... It was, yep. <laughs> yep. It was... Yeah, Joe got in trouble. Or uh, John, sorry, John got in trouble with liberal Twitter this week. So watch out. Yeah, I was on. Well, watch liberal out. Liberal tr- Twitter came at me. Yeah, liberal Twitter came at John this week. What, so what did you do? Uh, what did you do? Liberal Twitter, uh, you know, was in outrage, absolute outrage, that the national parks who had got their budgets cut had to raise prices, and they raised some. Uh, parks had to go up 40%. 25% of the parks... No, not 40%. $40. No. Um, which is like, yeah, it sucks. But at the same time, like, you know, 40 bucks is... If if you and your family are going to drive to the Grand Canyon, mm-hmm. if $40 is going to break you, don't go. Because, you know, no. you could you could get a flat tire... And if you don't have forty dollars to fix it, and your family's stuck, like that's probably irresponsible, right? Sorry, but if you don't have an extra forty dollars for a vacation, you probably just shouldn't go. Th- My family didn't go on vacations <laughs> because we didn't have the forty dollars. Look, f- <laughs> if I could pay forty dollars to leave my son at the Grand Canyon, that's <laughs> that's, that's where money, it's at. <laughs> that's money well, well spent. See, there it is. Well, that I, is well I'm worth it. I'm fine with that price hike. Good. Yeah, Sign me up. Sign me up. Yeah. Anyways, so clarify, clarify your problematic stance, Joe. Oh, it was. Just, it's not that I have anything against cornrows. Mm-hmm. I just think that Joel Embiid's hair is so freaking cool to begin with. Why Very would you true. put that in cornrows? Like he has the best hair in the league. I'm, I'm, I'm not apologizing for that. Yeah. Don't mm-hmm. Sounds like you're uh, exoticizing uh, his hair. Yeah, I might be mm-hmm. just a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. Seems a little, bit. A little problematic. He's a man. Might have He's to take some man. points off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Joe, do you have uh, do you have anything uh, anything you want to promote? Uh, yeah, you can find my show, the Superfly Podcast, the Superfly on, Podcast, great podcast, the, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Thank you, thank yes, you. thank you. Really it's not fun as, good as yours. No, 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 no. no. They're just different. They're just different. All right, just it's different. it's much better than. Hey, case. Joe, you got a good um, <laughs> any music you're listening to? You're big into music. I actually, you had mentioned a jazz guy, the yeah. Bulls. J- yes, and I started listening. What was his name? Sorry. I listened to that oh, album. Marquise Hill. Marquise, Marquise Hill. Hill. Yes, yes, yes. Freaking tastic. Yep, yeah. yep. And I if did you're listen in to the that. Jazz. Did you? Good. Awesome. Yeah, I did. It was really good. What, what else? What, what else are you listening John to? John Beasley. John, John Beasley, Beasley is another jazz musician. Yeah, check okay. him out. He uh, he has a jazz orchestra, and it's the Monkestra. We just went to see him in New York two oh. weeks ago. They're amazing. Okay. Uh, All right. Anyone else uh, you're really feeling right now? Mastodon as usual. Ah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, any stuff like that. The, kid, the, kid, the, the kids I'm turned over. me on to this EDM guy, Marshmallow. Digging Whoa. Him. Yeah. Digging him. I think he's really, really popular. EDM? 
Yeah. No, I don't usually like it, but this is like oh, pop God. EDM. This oh, is God. Like, this Smoked is like, pot once. This is like EDM. This, this is like right EDM here. for like old people <laughs> oh. or, like, uh, or like young teenage girls. It's really good. I really like this marshmallow character. Oh, okay. He All dresses right. like a giant marshmallow. I, I, I did I uh, did the cool guy thing and Wikipedia'd him as soon as I started listening to him. <laughs> dresses like a giant marshmallow and uh, no one knows his identity. Right? Ooh. Yeah. He's like the Banksy. Cool. So he's like pop Banksy. He's uh, like, so you mean he's like punk? shitty pop Banksy. So, so he's uh, like Mr. Mr. Baywatch. <laughs> it's Mr. Brainwash. Awesome. <laughs> All right, oh, Joe. Also, thank you so much. For one more thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more thing I want to plug. Uh, I There's t-shirts from my show, and if you buy one, all the proceeds go to Puerto Rico. Oh, uh, all right. Well, I'm going to buy one then, Joe. I saw it. You it's should. a good design. Your, it's your good, new logo is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't want my name on your chest, I'll send you a Sharpie as well. Yeah. Uh, Joe, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you're sure. welcome back um, anytime. Um, you know, as long as it's not next week, but sometime <laughs> after that, you know, not too much, but you're welcome back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like play it cool, you. you know, play it cool, of, play it cool. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Bit, yeah. A little bit of Borelli yeah, goes yeah, a long yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's Headlines. That says. was a good headline. <laughs> Edit that into the headlines. Yeah. All right, whatever. All right, well, everyone, thanks for, thanks for listening. Me, Until next week, keep pooping. Keep pooping. Thanks, Joe. Have you ever been to a volcano when it was erupting? You're now listening to Super they a bunch of guys who ain't never played the game. Super Hooper! Super Hooper! That's what you say, bro. We just won a fucking loss! Super Hooper! I'm supposed to be the franchise player, and we in here talking about practice. Super Hooper! That's tough.